Have you ever thought about the locks or security on your house or business? Have you ever wondered why the keys to your new car cost so much? Well, at AA Lock, Deck & Security, we can help with securing your valuables. We can even replace those expensive transponder keys. We can give you the knowledge that no one else will. Call AA Lock, Deck & Security at 867-1965. That's 867-1965. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, 12 minutes before 11 o'clock. As we get closer to Veterans Day, I'm reminded that every every year on Veterans Day, uh, we remember our veterans, and 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 quite frequently a list of veterans that it, it becomes part of the the show that we do on Veterans Day and around Veterans Day includes a list of celebrities who have served our country in in the military. Um, we have um, two survivors of kamikaze uh, attacks. That will be at the college across the street at the College of Central Florida at the Klein Center. They'll be there tomorrow, October 25th at 1 p.m. So two men are Jim Phillips and Conrad Dutton. I don't think I've ever met Conrad, but Jim Phillips has been in the studio, and what an amazing story he tells of how the boat was sunk. He had been on fire, as were many of his comrades. He was in the ocean all night long with the clothing totally burned off of him, his skin totally burned. Um, to see him now, you would never believe he had been through something so horrendous. Survived through the night, survived being shot at the next morning by uh, enemy aircraft. Um, and uh, so he'll be across the street and uh, at, at the College of Central Florida. And what time is this? This is 1, 1 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. It's free, by the way. Mm -hmm. go, to, go to see that. So when we bring up the list of, of celebrities, um, Jimmy Stewart's name always comes up. If I were to ask you, what did Jimmy Stewart do in World War II? You might raise your hand and say, oh, he was in the uh, Army Air Corps, right? Which is what yeah. they called the Air Force back then. Right. Well, well, what did he do? You don't know, right? No. Uh, you're going to find out. Robert Matson did the uh, did the research. His, his book about this is called Mission, Jimmy Stewart and the Fight for Europe. And uh, Robert is a filmmaker. He's the recipient of the Benjamin Franklin Award for Biography of the Year for Fireball. Carol Lombard and the Mystery of the Flight 3 worked for 10 years with NASA Aeronautics. He has written and directed films for NASA. He's a researcher, and he's the author of this book called Mission, Jimmy Stewart and the Fight for Europe. Good morning, Robert. How are you? I'm um, terrific, Larry. Thanks for having me on. What a great, great story. What, w um, where are you calling from, first of all? Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. All right. What directed you toward this this topic, and how hard was it to get the information? He took uh, he took what he what he did with him to the grave. He didn't share it with anybody, right? That's correct. He didn't even share it with his own family. My gosh. Uh, uh, so I, I was looking for something to follow up Fireball with. I was looking for untold Hollywood stories, and this is the greatest one. <laughs> and it was sitting there waiting for me. Um, so I used government records and the men who flew with him to recreate the story, even though he would never talk about it. Wow. And, and did you discover things that were predictable? Did you discover things that you never would have guessed in a million years? What, what was the discovery like? The discovery was that his combat career, you could not make stuff like that up. You know, it was more harrowing than Hollywood. Uh, I had no idea. I didn't know if he was a real hero or if he was you know, a studio manufactured hero, but he was the real McCoy. Wow. Was he treated uh, differently? Because he had uh, he already achieved uh, fame before the war, right? He had just won the Academy Award. So was he treated differently, or, or was he just like any of the other guys? He wanted to be just like any of the other guys, and, and really with his peers he was, but he was a movie star. He was a celebrity, so the generals wanted to hang out with him. Even though he was a lieutenant or a captain, you know, he always had sort of like a special in with command, and that's how he got overseas. They wanted to keep him stateside, and he said, no, no, I want to go fight. Oh, wow. Um, did you speak to any of his children to get the information? Or no, they wouldn't have known anything, right? No, that's right. I, I stayed away from them just because 
I wanted to get an impartial view on everything, I finally sent the book to um, Kelly, who was representing the family, and she read it, and she was moved to tears. She said, thank you for telling us what our dad did in the war, because he wouldn't talk about it. Why do you think he didn't want to talk about it? I, I mean, I've, I've known many uh, World War II vets, and not just World War II, vets, period, that yes. just don't want to talk about what they went through. Was it this? What was his reason for not wanting to talk about it? It was the same. Uh, how can you understand if you weren't there? But it was also, he was such a perfectionist that he never thought he did good enough. He never thought he was good enough, even though he was a very successful combat officer. He led squadrons. He led a whole wing of aircraft, hundreds of planes at one time, but he never felt like he, he did it well enough. And I think that's one of the reasons he bottled it up inside. He had to have earned the respect of uh, every man that he that 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 he uh, commanded, though, because that was a, a life and death situation on all those missions. Oh yeah, they loved him. Uh, they still love him. They you know they speak so highly of him even today. The survivors. And there aren't many of them, and I've lost a couple of them as I was writing the book, and it's just very sad. But yeah, they love them. The cover of the book shows him in uniform, and uh, when you look at somebody in uniform, you look at the decorations on the uniform, and the, the obvious question, especially if you're a kid, <laughs> is, hey, what did you do to get that? What, what's this mean? And did, did he avoid those questions? Well, it was very... It was very common knowledge that he had won the Distinguished Flying Cross, two of those, and that he had won the Air Medal with three Oak Leaf Clusters for all of his missions. So that was public record, but he wouldn't talk about what was involved in getting those ribbons that are on his chest. How did you dig deeper? When you found something in the military records that indicated something big or, or something maybe... De near death, near deadly. Um, how did you dig deeper beyond what you had in front of you? That's a good question because some of those records are, you know, they're handwritten in pencil, fractions of sentences. You talk to the guys that he flew with and said, what does this mean? Or you looked at diaries that other flyers kept of the same mission and then it reveals okay, that's what this means. A, a, a shell exploded under the cockpit and blew a hole between his legs. You know, <laughs> he would never tell you, but you can get at the information. Was he injured at all? He was not injured, never a scratch. It's a miracle that he survived the 20 missions with the conditions that he faced. It was interesting that uh, Glenn Miller and his band performed while Jimmy Stewart was in the uh, service years, and then Jimmy Stewart played him in the movie years after that. Oh, that's so ironic that they were in the same place at the same time at, at his air base in Tibbenham, England, in January of 44, and um, Miller died later that year. Wow. You, you actually went into the bombers to uh, experience what it was like to fly in them. Yeah, you have to. You have to go up and, and experience the... It's like flying in the back of uh, an 18-wheeler, really. I mean, it's really rough, and you get knocked all around, and it's so loud. He lost part of his hearing from all those long missions and those oh, bombs. really? What were we in? Were we B-17s? That were we? Yeah. Yeah, we had an opportunity to fly in a B-17 once, and uh, yes, it was very loud, but, but the thing you can't really imagine is what is it like to be in that thing while you're being shot at and while, uh, while the... I guess the, the guys in the back, whoever's shooting, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't even know, but what is it like to actually be in war in one of those things knowing that they could knock you out of the sky? Yeah, uh, that's the part that I, you know, that you have to use your imagination to try to imagine what that was like. But the, uh, the truly amazing thing is that when you're flying on one of those missions, you are supposed to fly straight and level. I mean, that's the whole point, so that you can bomb. So they weren't allowed to take evasive maneuvers. They just <laughs> had to be sitting ducks up there. Oh, gosh. Who, who were the, uh, the German characters in the book? Were they Nazi sympathizers who befriended him, or, or who were they? No, I wanted to get a German point of view, and so I, um, I used a German civilian girl who was under the bomb, and I used a, um, and she was a, a real person, still alive, living in Chicago, and uh, I used the commanding general of the German Air Force who had to send fighters up against the American bombers and try, you know, you get that. Wow. Wow, I didn't mean to cut you off right there. I'm just amazed that you got, were able to talk to them. Uh, well, Galand, General Galand is dead, but left 
terrific diaries and records. And I, I just needed a, a real life character to show the other side that uh-huh. sort of gives you it gives you more of a sense of what Stewart accomplished against these odds. Yeah. And he was so real too, Jimmy Stewart. He didn't even succumb to the uh, uh, Hollywood glamour and everything like that 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 other people did. No, he was an intense loner all his life. You know, a very private introvert. You would never guess it, you know, because he he could sit there and talk to Johnny Carson, uh, tell great stories. But he he was very private. Uh, it's another reason he kept it all inside. Do you do you think this is kind of speculation? I'm just asking about war in general, not necessarily Jimmy Stewart. But if you are fighting a war and people are dying because you're dropping bombs, you don't see them die. But if you're on a battlefield and you've got a rifle, you see them die. I'm wondering if the PTSD, we didn't call it back then, but this, the same effect, uh, war fatigue, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. w- was it different for somebody who was... Because dr- I, I remember reading that the guy who uh, flew the, uh, the Enola, Enola Gay, Gay was, w- had, was tremendously upset by what had happened. Did, 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 not, did, did, did it not affect somebody dropping bombs as much as somebody pulling a trigger? It did. It did. You, you don't see what's going to happen on the ground. But you see what's happening to the boys around you. You know, the kids you're commanding, you see them get shot up. You yeah. see their planes go down. You see them come out, you know, yeah. uh, see parachutes come out. Uh, there were missions where he saw men come out of planes and smack against his windshield. Oh I mean, those gosh. are things that he saw. And so he didn't need to see what was going on the ground wow. to suffer. Fascinating book. I, I'm sorry we ran up against the, the uh, break. Uh, the book is called Mission, Jimmy Stewart and the Fight for Europe. Robert Matson. thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, go to robertmatson.com. Go to any booksellers, and they'll be able to give it to you or sell it to you. This is WLCA Ocala. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. Donald Trump holds rallies in the battleground state of Florida today, where early voting has just begun, while Hillary Clinton campaigns in New Hampshire over the weekend. Clinton again called Donald Trump unqualified to be president. To say you won't respect the results of the election. That is a direct threat to our democracy. The Trump campaign says it's too premature to count him out. Fox's Rachel Sutherland. Federal safety officials arriving at the scene near Palm Springs where a tour bus slammed in.